Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Hope you guys all had a great weekend so far. Welcome to your weekend recap of CSGO News. Whatever's happened the past few days, we're going to cover inside this video. Hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story though, and I do want to quickly say, and maybe apologize for the thumbnail being a bit aggressive, I'm actually on Steele's side for here. If you guys have not heard about the argument between Steele and Ricks going back and forth on Twitter over the past few days, this is actually surfacing after Steele apologized ahead of time on Twitter. Yes, he actually made sure to actually apologize before this actually was brought to light because he knew it probably would happen. If you guys have not seen the clip, we'll play it very shortly. Shortly, he did take to Twitter though to apologize ahead of time after he got a bit toxic uh, towards Ricks in a face it match and apparently said some things that he maybe shouldn't have said. But also, I do want to talk about later on, guys, the updates as to what's happened around this story. If you guys have not seen a clip though of what Steele did, well, here's Steele getting a little angry in a face it match. There's smoke fountain. Wait, why did you Because you're not calling anything. I don't know what to do. Oh my god, oh my god. you're such a fucking loser. Yep, so yep. Why don't you fucking call a strat, Ronnie, you fucking dumbass? Just call a strat. You're such a dumbass, you'll never be on another team again because you're shit and no one wants to play with you. Call a fucking strat! Wait, stay here. I'm literally fucking throwing. Okay, I guess I'm throwing. You can't call a fucking thing out of fucking freeze time. You just run out with a CZ without saying a word. I'm the one who's throwing. You're actually fucking brain dead. It's crazy. And from the outside looking in without context to the story, you might say, well, Steel took it a bit too far there, maybe a bit too rude. But if you guys actually watch previous clips and it, it became very apparent by the community out there, people who were actually watching the live stream themselves, it was actually Ricks who instigated this the whole argument instead. Uh, for a, a large amount of time, he was actually mentioning things like I by power to try and kind of instigate this behavior out of Steel. Now, Steel did take it maybe a bit too far with his words. That's why he apologized ahead of time on Twitter. But yes, guys, shortly afterwards as well, it became apparent by Face It that it was not Steel's fault. They actually gave Ricks, not Steel, they gave Ricks a 24 hour face it ban, which has now been concluded actually over with as well. So they still are going back and forth on Twitter, guys. Apparently, these two people do not like each other very much, but that happened this past weekend. We had Steel not giving a ban, and Ricks instead giving a 24 hour face it ban. Still, though, face it doing some great things. If you guys have not been watching them, they are doing great things, expanding to FPL circuits, so on and so forth. They're doing a great job competing right now with ESCA. But now, into our second story out there, all based around WESG, the largest CSGO prize pool we're going to see throughout 2018. It was an amazing tournament to watch, but also a lot of gr a lot of not so great things happening. And of course, I can start this off by saying with the hotel issues. I'm sure you guys saw all the endless pictures out there of the hotel rooms these players had to stay inside of. Of course, the two by four beams holding up the hotel lobby, the dirty water, the dirty walls, the fungus, the so on and so forth. Well, of course, WSG eventually did move those players to nicer hotels. That was in great response. So I do want to say this entire tournament had a, a lot of bad flaws, bad issues, but WSG's response was was quite timely for a lot of them. Now there was also a few server issues during the games themselves. The one big issue. I had as well. Uh, again, I couldn't watch too many matches because it was played in China, so the time zones here for America, I was mostly sleeping during these early matches. On top of that, though, a lot of the matches for day one and two were not even being live streamed. There was a lack of casters. Of course, there's 32 teams at WESG, so a lot of a lot of matches did not have casters. If they didn't have casters, they did not stream the games themselves, so you missed a lot of matches that were being played throughout the time. And again, a lot of those matches were lower tier teams, so I didn't really need to see them, but there were some crucial matches day one and two that you would like to have been, uh, been seen on live stream that just were not played altogether. On top of that as well, Again, another problem out there that was not WSG's fault was actually visa issues. Of the 32 teams going to the event, we actually had four teams not go. Half those teams had visa issues. Of course, then on top of that, it was actually Team EMC, a lower tier team, who decided to withdraw. And of course, we had Team Ukraine not going after Simple announced he would not be attending. Ukraine pulled out. And again, kind of ironically though, and a kind, of, kind of a lack of coincidence, I'm not really sure why this would happen, and kind of unfortunate uh, for some teams out there, but very fortunate for teams in Group E and H. They went through automatically the top 16 because two of those teams that missed, or of the four teams that missed, they all landed in groups E and H. So that kind of a, was a very easy top 16 for all those teams involved. Although I do want to say of all the teams in those groups, the teams in group E and H who got an automatic freebie to, uh, to the group of 16, none of those teams actually made playoffs. So maybe it was a curse. They need those warm-up games and they didn't get them. But yeah, unfortunately enough, MBS being one of them, which is kind of a big surprise there. But in the end, and we'll quick, really quick, spoiler alert if you guys did not see it, but all of you Fnatic fans are going to be very happy about this one, guys. In the end, it was Fnatic taking two of our largest events so far in 2018 in the span of 14 days. Why this is so shocking still is for a couple reasons out there. The first of which, if you guys were not aware of this, and I'm sure many of you guys were, the lack of wins they had over the past two years. Yes, indeed, at one point in time, they went 729 days without winning a single event, and now in the past 14 days, they have won over a million dollars in prize pools. They won IEM Sydney, and now, of course, WESG, which is amazing to see. On top of that, though, even more even more kind of a, just a surprise to throw this all in the world, we do, of course, have Golden apparently leaving this roster for Exist, former NIP Exist, 
list to join this team. So again, we also had confirmation out there in the rumors that this was actually decided before Star Ladder. Of course, Fnatic not doing amazing at Star Ladder, but then they go on to win IEM Sydney, and on top of that, WESG. It's just all the more stunning, guys, in the span of 14 days, what this team has done, and it really kind of calls into question, will Golden still leave this roster? Does he still need to? Now, WESG notoriously known for, for uh, maybe the matches not being the top tier matches. You're not going to play a lot of great quality teams here at WESG, and it might be more about your luck of the run more than the quality of teams that you do play. So we do have teams like Cloud9 being upset by teams like Team 1, the Brazilian team. That's the former team for Bit. Bit currently playing for the X100 Thieves roster. Maybe he shouldn't have left that team altogether. Uh, then eventually, guys, we do have the easier runs for teams like Space Holders. Space Holders beating teams alongside Russia, also Godsent, and although they actually swept those teams, people arguing that somehow Space Holders and their group play, their group play matches were far easier than Fnatic's, which you could argue is yes, but then when you look at their playoff runs, guys, very similar. So Space Holders sweeping Godsent, sweeping Team Russia, two rosters that probably weren't top tier rosters, but compared to here, they're definitely top 16 rosters and teams in the playoffs. Compare that to Fnatic's playoff run, guys. Fnatic actually beating MVP, and alongside that, they also beat Team 1. Now, Team 1, I do want to say, a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, they beat Cloud9, they must be amazing. Team 1 went on to lose to Fnatic and also went on to lose to Team Russia. They got swept by them in the third place match. So that maybe was kind of a string of luck there in terms of T1, Team 1 beating Cloud9. I wouldn't say that was a top tier team, more so they got very lucky and had a great game against Cloud9. They weren't an amazing, and again, they're still a great roster, but still people arguing that Fnatic had a much harder run. I think it was a much harder run throughout their group play run, but then throughout playoffs, guys, for some pretty equal playoffs here. And again, either way, it was Fnatic taking down Space Holders in the final here. Space Holders taking down an easy 300k prize pool, but nonetheless, guys, a great matchup to watch if you guys did catch it. It was a best of three. It went to map three, and all maps were within four rounds of each other, ending on Mirage in Fnatic's favor, 16 to 14. Still a great matchup, guys. Still a great tournament, although it did have its flaws and setbacks. A lot of those flaws were actually not WSG's fault, and still a great tournament to watch, and it does make some you know some life-changing money for all these teams out there, especially Fnatic. It's turned around their team, and, and Space Holders taking second place. Team Russia coming home with 150k as well. Still a great tournament to watch, guys. Very fun to actually, I uh, hope if you guys did catch the matches. And also another CSGO news out there, roster change news confirmed a few days ago. NC Esports will return to CSGO with an all-finished lineup, and it's going to be based around Alu, the fan favorite. They actually signed him a couple days ago, officially for two years. A two-year CSGO contract is quite a long one, and it does seem they gave him the role of actually choosing his team, and the proof behind that is because, if you guys remember, it was a couple weeks ago he played for Havu Gaming, and now a couple weeks later he's been signed to NC Esports, and he's bringing a few of those Havu players with him, one of them being 20-year-old Alexi and also 16-year-old Sergey. Those guys have the looks of serious CSGO players, and this can be a pretty good roster so far. I know a few of those members, Alexi and of course Sergey from the Havu roster, are doing quite well, and them being quite a young roster, and all based around Alu, who we're going to assume right now will be the main opper. Of course, he ended his Optic Gaming days as back going back to the rifle. I'm going to assume he's going to be going back to the opping role, though, because they did not sign another opper. So the roster has been complete, guys, with Alu being the main member for NC Esports as they return to CSGO. We're going to see how these guys do. On top of that as well, we also had some Splice roster changes. Splice has now gotten rid of Roka. And on top of that as well, Dinitas and their new roster, if you guys remember, it was about a month ago, Dinitas signed the XSOR gaming roster for ESL Pro League and having their spot there. Not doing too well in Pro League right now. Currently, they've actually released one of their members known as Exceed. So those are the roster change news for now, guys. Some minor roster changes out there, but NC Esports is back, and we'll see if Alu returns. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. I'm in my, I'm in the, the back part of my house right now because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be very quiet. So please, I know this might be a little weird. It's going to be a really quick clip. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Seriously, thank you guys for all the great comments, the great live streams this past weekend. I'll be live streaming this week for a few days, and also uh, I'll officially be doing my charity stream Saturday. So by the time you guys see this, it's also Sunday. So in six days time, guys, I'm going to do an eight to 12 hour charity stream, probably a 12 hour charity stream with all proceeds, all skin donations, all donations, all sponsor payments, all going to charity. And also on top of that, and again, I don't want my dad to hear this and my dad's upstairs right now. Um, I'm going to be shaving my head at the very end of the event. So I think right now I currently have two sponsors. I just want to make you guys aware of that in six days, I'll be shaving my head for leukemia and lymphoma and also on top of that just doing a fun stream tons of giveaways tons of just great fun time so thank you all for watching guys really do appreciate that i will see you all next time remember i like you goodbye